Hello. Hello. How are you? How are you? How are you? People ask me, when did you start art? Where did you begin? Nobody taught me art. Friends I had my age did what we you children do. We dug up our own clay. We made our own things. That was play. It was natural. You don't have to teach children how to be creative. All they need is the opportunity. You made that snake. Yeah, I made that snake. This what you like the best? Oh, I had the idea of making an art park. I hate to use the word art, you know, but I was uh, expanding my backyard, you know. Tony built this house in 1950, at the time when the city of Egan was exploding in development, and he's been working on the ground ever since then. The other part of that, too, is that when he would work on conventional sculptures, he typically worked so fast in making them, he said, if I just work on that, I'll run out of space of where to keep them. So I might as well commission myself to do a 60-acre sculpture that ought to keep me busy for a while. My ambition here was to bring art down to the people, not just in museum. It's been very successful. People walk around and they respond just right. Whether they're educated and educated, they respond correctly. And they make us feel, ah, success. All I know is that this park is here to stay. I was born in Italy. My town is called Pretare, which means a place of rocks. So you see, I'm conditioned to rocks. That's like to carve rocks, okay? But when I got to be around 15, I decided my little town got a little bit too small. So I crossed the ocean alone. I was old enough to stay Italian and young enough to become an American. And I intend to do just that, stay both. I learned to become an American when I went in the army, World War II, believe it or not. He was sent back to Italy. Part of his job was protecting the Italian artworks, so he got to get very close to all of these masterpieces, and he could learn just from exposure to them. That sort of started his um, belief of how the park should function, too, that people just need to be exposed to things. They don't need to have somebody telling them what they ought to think about it. They just need to experience it for themselves. I came over here to the Walker Art Center. They had a school there, they had an art school. And from the art school, I learned from what people practice, not what they said. If you wait for the instruction, you'll never give, you should live your life being unsure what to like, what, not to, what to dislike, what to do, what not to do. What the heck are we getting so much education and be so in doubt about everything? He transferred to the University of Minnesota. He was in a hurry because he already had a wife and a child and had spent all those years in war. He wanted to get on with his life, so he got through the university with a master's degree in education, I think in two years. And um, from there, he got hired at McAllister Art Department and worked there from 1949 through 1991. For most of that time, he was the chairman of the department. When I was at college, so I changed the curriculum, made art a requirement for graduation. I helped design the first buildings, specially designed for art. We couldn't find anything in the whole country, no, not even in Europe. So we invented one. Teachers should not show off that they know better than the students. That doesn't teach anything. You have to allow the person to get there. I used to tell my students, I don't expect you to agree with me now. All I expect is for you to understand me and I, I can wait 10 years for you to, to agree with me. That me, me, means a lot more then than it does whether you agree with me today or not, you see.
at the time that he was working, there wasn't the awareness of how valuable public art is to the quality of life in a community. And so almost all of the commissions available were in churches. One of the most visible ones is on the Normandale Lutheran Church, which is at the intersection of 62 and Highway 100. It's a very bold design, knowing that people were going to be going by at 60, 70 miles an hour. It needed to be just something that people would get looking at very quickly. Probably Tony's largest sculpture is the one up in St. Cloud on their mall. Being the Granite City, they commissioned Tony to do um, what's called the Granite Trio. There's a total of 32 tons of granite um, three separate pieces up there. What was interesting about that is that normally when a commission is done, they ask an artist to make a sketch or do a model. And Tony is a direct carver, which means that he takes a stone and starts carving, and however the process of carving takes him, that's the sculpture that comes from it. And so he told the committee to look at the kind of work that he does, and that if they would trust him, that they would get a much better sculpture out of it if they just let him go. And they trusted him and he found boulders, basically, and he carved them. And um, I was just amazed at, the, at how large they are and how much energy it would take because most people, if they carve stone, they carve marble or sandstone or something. They don't carve 32 tons of granite. I made small sculptures to, to put on pedestal. I was told, make sure they don't weigh more than 25 pounds. Well, I like to work with tons. I like to use the big things, and I like to use permanent material, such as granite, not soft marble. Granite, it, it resists me. The prevailing of something isn't that easy. I like the challenge. Pony Art Park is really an amazing place. It isn't just about the environment, and it isn't just about art. It's really about both of those. It really is a live sculpture. I made myself a home first, and then I started, you know, working on my backyard. The land was too beautiful. Uh, rather than putting um, houses on the property, he would commission himself to make a sculpture garden. People said, do you have a plan? Of course not. I went around with a bobcat. I drew with a bobcat, rather than on a piece of paper. Then I had some sculpture that I want in here too, but I have something which is a little bit different. I've seen other places where they exhibited sculpture outdoors, but they used the grounds as neutral places upon which they show things, like a window display. I don't believe that. I don't teach that. An object of beauty as value in relationship to the space it occupies. I want to balance it between nature and uh, mankind, you know, the cooperates rather than intrude. So when I put my sculpture here, you see the hill first, and then you discover the sculpture. It's pretty amazing that the person with the right temperament, the right quality of artistic vision, happened to own beautiful land and was tenacious enough. Some people might say stubborn, but I'll put a good, a good spin on it and say tenacious enough to just weather through all the ups and downs. And now we have like 17,000 people that come here every year. We've had performances this summer in the amphitheater. We had over 800 people coming. And the community has just really embraced the project. Tony is a force of nature in his own right. I think it's really remarkable for somebody to have a vision for something that's truly unique. But just to have a vision isn't enough. To actually dedicate your life to realizing the vision and to dedicate your life to providing an opportunity for humanity to engage with that vision. Uh, I mean, he's a tremendous artist uh, and visionary. He loves what he's doing. What would you like to know from me? We also have tours for school groups and youth. I think we will have probably about a thousand children come through on that program, probably more. He's not happy that he 
can't work as much as he used to be able to, um, but I think he's taking that in stride and just wants to make sure that this place is preserved for the future. I cannot help but do what I do, and that's what you're doing. That is me, whether you like me or not, okay? But my selfishness is to see people happy so that so we're all equal, okay? I'm forgiven. <laughs> Minnesota Original is made possible by the State Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.